Hi, I'm Jody. Welcome back to my channel Geeking with Jody. Today I want to show you or do all the things and you can watch, enjoy, repeat, do, expand, whatever you want. One of the activities many professional programmers used to do. And that is cloning games or writing a new game. For sure, this might take one hour or something. Uh, we cannot write a very nice game. We can. Let's see. Uh, what I have in mind is a game in your terminal. There will be some obstacles. You will be the player here. You can move around. You can go around these obstacles. And you, can, you have to eat something. For example, eat a food. It's a pizza. Everyone loves pizza. So there are some pizzas. They will expire after some time and move to another place. And you can go around and eat them. This looks like a snake with this difference that you are not growing. And there are some obstacles. And uh, even I was thinking maybe it's fun to add some Pac-Man to it too. Let there be some enemies. I'm trying to draw a skull. And they will chase you too. So this is a combination of the Pac-Man and Snake. Let's call it Pac-Nick. Pac-Man and Snake. Pac-Nick. Maybe. Ah, so I want to write this. I'm writing it in curses. Curses. I'm not sure if it comes from cursor or cursing or it has a different meaning, but it's a very powerful library to draw things on your terminal. When you have a terminal and you are using curse, uh, curses, you can create a window here, which is by default this size, and you can say this pixel should be changed to this, not the pixel, this character. So write an A here, write a B here, wait for keyboard, whatever they type based on it, print some message here, and these kind of stuff. I used to use it a lot in the C programming language, but also in Python you have it. And good news is in Python, it's part of the standard library. So you don't need to install it separately. It's part of the batteries included in Python. So let's go for it. What I want you to see, do, repeat, enjoy, whatever, is seeing how a larger programmer can larger program can be created by small steps, thinking logically, adding sections. This is what makes big programs. And as I told you, many of the good programmers have written small games. As a practice, you can learn this, you can watch and enjoy it, hopefully. Might not be that joyful because it's long. Should be. Depends on how you watch it. If you are watching to learn, it should be joyful. But you can extend it, write it again for yourself, and everything. On my repository, I have a programming class cheats. These are some codes that you can use in your projects or programs. Very small. Uh, I will create what we called it. Uh, patch Nake. See the Pac-Nick, it's a Pac-Man and Snake combination. I will create a file here. It's called Pac-Nake PY. We open it in a code editor. I have my code editor here. Let's enlarge it. Okay, so include in port. I was writing too much C these days. Import curses. Whenever you want to start using a library, the official uh, tutorials, helps, documents are always the best. It says, okay, init a screen. We did. Then it says no echo. Because normally on all terminals, when you are typing something, it's being echoed. Whatever you type, you can see it there. But we don't want to see what we are typing. So, no echo. Then, C break. Every single character you type will be used. You don't need to press enter. Then what we have, keypad true. I think it reads easier. 
with things like keyboard left. Okay, no break. And it says if you want to finish, it's good to do these things. Okay, at the end of the program, when we are done, we have to close with this. Uh, what else do we have? We have a wrapper. We don't want a wrapper. We can just call something and see what will happen. And we have a add string. Interesting. Let's see. So I'm saying start create the screen, add a string at position 10 and 10, and write 10 divided by just write this. some dummy text then refresh the screen and wait for a key then finish whatever you've done let's run this it's always very good practice to uh, test often it's working like a charm any key and we are out it's always good to test and test and test a huge program which works fine used to be a small program which was working fine don't code a lot and then run and then see all or lots of errors. Try, 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 and you will understand all your code issues and everything. Now we have written something on the page. Uh, but let's create our game. My idea is having a matrix called word, which represents my words. So there are lots of pixels. So it's a two dimensional word full of something. Let's create it a free and empty one. Word equals a matrix. For I in range of, I need the width and height of my screen. Should be readable here, lines. You have curse lines and curses calls. So, I can say, uh, I think this should happen after the anything this. So, let's move all, all of this here. will be nice. My max lines will be cursors, lines. And my max number of columns should not be more than cursors. calls this is good then i will create my word i will say for i in range of max lines create a new line so append an empty array now i'm creating my new line this is what i'm doing i have my word it's an array so for each line i start a new array and will add uh, empty spaces there for example so for j in range of max number of columns i need to do a word i which i just created here What I need happened another row. These are my rows. No. I want happened only this. So I'm creating a matrix of dots. I can try to draw it and see what will happen. So when I want to draw something, I have to start again for i in range of max l for j in range of max columns and i want draw in this place so i have to say std screen this is the screen i created add i can add a character on the point i and j and what i should add the dot at the moment when done i have to refresh and now it should be shown here no. Says returned error, cursor error. 
return this. We don't know. Ah, uh, we can always do this to make sure that we are not going out of the range. Now it's working. Sometimes it goes out of the range. I didn't read the documents very, very uh, detailed. And this is better to say, okay, print word i and j because I have created my word. To make it cleaner, I can say define init. I will init my program here. And this can be called defined draw. Whenever I call it, it will draw the whole word. In my main program, I can say init and then draw. So I created a matrix. Each line is a list. Filled all of these with dots here in my word word variable and I have a draw function which goes through all of these draws this on the screen with at character on this specific position says whatever word is there and then refreshes the screen very nice but now all of my word is obstacles I don't want this I want very few of these not very few but some in most cases, we import random. So I want random maps. Here, I was adding dot everywhere. Normally, my word should be like this. I should have nothing in my word. Now it's totally empty. I want some of them with dots as obstacles. I have to do something like this. If a random 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 will give me a number between 0 and 1 is larger than something for example uh, 0 0.9 so in only in 10% of cases my word should be an dot otherwise my word should be a space that can be written as I wrote but it's cleaner to write it like this append this if random random is larger than 0.9 else this very easy to read in english space if random random is larger than 9 else a dot so it works very nice and 10 percent of my pixels will be dots no ah because yes sure Now we have our word, which is nice. I can create a player. Here, when I was initializing, I can say, uh, sorry, player lines is zero, player columns is zero. But in the init, I can create another random for this, which is nicer. I can say player L is random, rand int of 0 max l and player column i'm creating one line and one column for my player so this is the location of my player is random rand int and this should be rand int this will give me an integer random between 0 and max column so i found a place i want to change these variables so here i will go with global player l and player C. Now I have a player, but I haven't drawn my player. So in the draw, I have to say, okay, it's always good to draw the word. Here I can say, draw the player. And on draw the player, I can say, uh, let's see the screen at character on player L and player C my player ah we have it it's here nice you can see it so now we have a player we have a word but nothing happens it just draws it and finishes the whole thing 
It's very common in many, many, many games and game engines. You have a loop which goes through and just lets things happen. So I have something like this. While true do forever. I don't want the init here. I have the init here. While true draw. So it will continue to draw the page all the time. But something should happen. So I can say, when drawing, read a keyboard. See if a key, e uh, ah? if a key is pressed. We have it here for sure. Ah, it's here. User input. User input works like this. You have get ch, reads the, uh, refreshes the screen, and then waits for the user to hit a key, displaying the key if echo has been called, blah, blah. Get key does the same but converts it into a string. Better for us. So we will use get key. And it works like this. While true, same loop. Let's copy this. We will read it on the other side of the word. So I have a key. I read a key. I will check. Instead of get ch, we will use get key, which gives us a character. And then we save if C in ASDW, gamers know it, just move up and down and right and left. Do what? If the key which was pressed is, was one of these, move the player and send the C for it. I can define the function here. Say I have a, let's define it here to be cleaner. Define function move, get C moves the player based on C, which can be any of A, S, D, and W. We won't do anything at the moment. But another problem. Here, document said, refreshes the screen and then waits for the user. Later it says, you can define a no delay. So the system won't wait for your key press. Just goes through the loop. If you press something, better. So let's define that here too. We say curses, or it's in the std. Str no delay, true. I don't want any delay. Let's run it. Ah, it broke. Its cursor says no input, but I was checking the C. The documentation has the answer. It says, uh, to signal that no input is read, get ch returns cursor's error, get ch, but I'm using get key. And get key raises an exception. So if nothing is read here, I will get an exception. So I have to say, try to read this. If nothing is read, C is nothing. This is much nicer. So I read the keyboard. We can say read the keyboard, move, blah, blah. Let's try again. Cool. Now I'm pushing the keys. It works. I have to go with Control C to break it. This is not cool. So we can say Ah, it doesn't have, have it here. I can say if C is one of A, S, D, W, call the move. We are not moving at the moment. Else, if C equals Q, playing is false. I can define a playing here and say playing starts with true, continue while playing. And then, if this happened, playing is false. So the game finishes as soon as I push Q. And we don't want that. So, nothing happens. If I go with Q, game finishes. Interesting, but we got something because we had this get ch, which is not needed here. We can here, we can add. Uh, std screen put 
uh, add a star sorry where on in the middle so i will go with a uh, max line divided by two this divides by an in the result is an integer not a float and max c so i'm in the middle if you wanted to do it better you had to go a little bit backwards but that is fine thanks for playing then still the screen refresh so people will see it and time sleep one wait for one second so we need to import time two let's run it now we have this this is the player these are obstacles and q exits very nice not very nice we have to clean screen once more will make it nicer so when it's done steady screen clear steady screen standard screen refresh now everything is super cool when exiting but let's go to the move we created everything now we need our user to move based on asdw here so if c equals w we have to go up we had a variable here player l and player c lines and columns so to go up it's enough to say player lines equals player lines minus one one less line so going up L if C equals A, I'm going to the left. So player columns minus one. L if C equals D, I'm going to the right. So player columns plus one. And L if C equals S, I'm going down so player lines plus one this is how the screen works in curses here is zero zero here is one zero here is two zero here is two one lines and columns so this is two ten this is two twenty based on program we wrote here is max uh lines max c so let's see if our simple move works it broke cannot access log ah okay it says what is player c you are accessing i have to say global player l player c so use the same global variables we had in our main program it's not a good habit to use global variables, but in game writing, it's very common. I don't know why, but it's not nice. Okay, ah, we are moving. Actually, we are moving with the keys. But if I go here, it will break because suddenly I'm decreasing uh, player C by one because I'm going to the left. It's less than zero and it breaks because cursors cannot draw it on minus one. So I need something to check and say if uh, player L is larger than uh, max L, uh, player L equals max L. Never become larger than this. If this is ugly, what I can, to, I can do, I can create a function for this and say player L equals force in range player L uh, mean now zero and max L. I can define this function because I am going to do this many times, maybe. Def this creates a value, gets mean and gets max and says, if v is larger than max 
return max. If v is smaller than mean, return mean. Otherwise, return v itself. Very nice, clean, and easy. Min and max are defined words, not a very nice habit to use them, but anyway, let's do this. Okay, this is nicer. So, this forces the value to be in this range. Now I can say player 1, L, nice, and player, player 1, not, no, 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 no player 1, player line and player column force in range player column minimum is zero and maximum is max columns now it is nicer let's try again okay now i cannot go out but i'm kind of stuck there ah it happens a lot because here i'm going to minus one one good trick is doing this. Silly, but works. Later historians will write how we cannot use the last row in this lovely game. Okay, that next generations are going to play. Now we have this. But uh, what else? We need food and we need to not be able to bypass obstacles. Let's go for that. Very easy. I'm moving, right? Here I say, if I'm going to go up, go up if up is pressed. But if up is pressed and word player L lines minus one and Players columns not equal with an obstacle. Hmm. Very nice. This should work. Let's try it. I'm going up, I'm going here, I'm going down, going up, and I cannot go up anymore. Interesting. So I'm saying go there if up is pressed and Word in up is not an obstacle because let's copy this again. We have to fix them, but this is a template and blah blah. If going to the left, go. If the left is not an obstacle, if going to the down, no, sorry, go to the right, go unless. The right is an obstacle. And then going to the down, go when the line is blocked. Let's see. I'm stuck, cannot go anymore, cannot go anymore, cannot go anymore, cannot go up, and cannot go down. Now this is fixed. Nice. It's improving. What next? We need some food. For the food, I will have a variable called food and it's a array. In that list, I will create food instances. X, Y and H. X, Y and H. X, Y and H. Some people don't call this Y. Ha. So, when initializing, I will have a variable called foot. It's an array. When initializing, I will go with four. How many foods do we, know, do we want? It's a nice practice to have some configurations here on top. For example, it says foot count is 10. For example, uh, player character is x this is nicer because we can change it later just going to show you here i'm drawing it is 
but now it's much easier if I want to change it to something else. If I want to change number of foods, I don't need to go through the code. So I say for whatever in range of food count, do what? Find a place for a food. So I have to say food x is blah blah. That's ugly and I have it here. So let's do something. Move this to a function. If you are doing one something for more than once, it's good to have a function for it. I will define a random position. It won't get anything. Will return back a random position. So I will say x equals Ah, I had some copy. I can use this. And I can say L lines is this one, C is this one. The fun fact which I can add here is checking if this is already occupied. So I don't spawn my user on an obstacle or my food on an obstacle. I can say assume L is this and C is this. Now, while word L and C is not empty, repeat. I say, get one line, one column, and check. While this is not empty, choose another place. Uh, return L and C. This is a little bit programmatic. I have seen bugs like this. If I have a very small word occupied every, which occupied every single cell in that word, this loop will work forever. I have seen bugs like this. You got it. Because I get one point in my word, then check if it's empty. If it's empty, I will return them. While this is not empty, I will choose another line and another color. But if the whole world is occupied for whatever reason, very small screen, 10 foots occupied it. This will go forever and will create a bug. So, to do. This is one method some programmers create their to do. Some coding styles can show these to do's and everything. Bug if the whole world is occupied. Cool. So, or we can, you can go with fix or to do, depends on it. I prefer to do. So, what we were doing. Ah, we created a random position. Now, when I want to create my player, I can say player line and player column is random position. Nicer, right? I can do the same for the foot. I can say line and column equals random position get a random position foot age equals random rand int some age this is a problem because here we have a loop which runs thousands of times every single time i can slow this down because i don't need this much speed i can say time slip one We'll slip one second between each frame. This is super bad. I can go with something like this and see what will happen later. I running 50 frames per second, which is super cool. Let's go with 30. But this is a text system. And it doesn't mean this. I'm stopping it not to be faster than that. It will be slower for sure. Anyway, so here I have to check and see what happens to my food? Okay. Random rant in between maybe thousands and two thousands. Let's see how it works. Each time we will reduce one. When it's zero, the food is gone. And I will add this to food. Food append this top. Lines, columns, and age. Now I have my foods. Let's run it. I'm not showing them but nothing should be broken. Okay, interesting. Now let's show the food. Draw the word, draw the player. I will add show the food. 
and I will say 4f in foot, go one by one, uh, line, column, and age equals f, because you remember f was something like this, uh, one line, one column, and age of the foot, another one. So I'm going one by one here and showing them. I will do it uh, standard screen at character on this line on this column show the foot I can say foot character so later I can define this let's go with star for now let's run Ooh, I have my foot and I broke something List index out of word. Okay, this is a very common thing in your programming. Word player uh, L plus one. This can be tricky. It's always to have a little bit larger word because I'm doing calculations exactly in this matrix. And then I'm checking if minus one is something and I'm out of my word. So when creating the word, it's always good to create it a little bit larger uh, here I had it I will go from minus one to plus one so I have a larger word but I'm not showing it so when checking things this won't happen cool ah but our silly thing that minus one somewhere didn't let me to choose this, but no problem. For that random position, I can also do this. And this is good. You can see when I have a function, I change it and it changes for everything. I don't need to go through one by one and find them. So I have my foot, but I cannot eat them. I was just passing them, right? Yeah, normal. I have to check if I'm eating my food. I can do this in move, but it's cleaner to do it as a step. My main game loop reads the keyboard, then based on the keyboard moves, then slips for this much. Let me do a uh, check food status. This is cool. I can create a function here and say def check food status i want to go one by one from my food and see if it's eaten i can say four f in food if no 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 uh line column and age equals f if l equals player l and c equals player c i'm on the food what we can do we can say the food should be gone. If I want to do this, you remember I had this matrix, uh, sorry, this list from the foods. I'm going to one by one. I want to change this. So it's better not to go by this method. It's better to go with for i in range of length of this so i will have zero one two to be able to modify them easier so i will say for i in a range of length of foot foot i same thing same logic now i can say that foot should disappear and be replaced by another foot somewhere so I can say now my new L and new C equals random position. See how cool is it that we have that function? My new A is a new age. So random rand int. I can create another. constant here 
food h and food h plus one because I will change this a lot. Food h equals one thousand maybe. We had it here and let's have it like food h and food h plus one. So all of the foods will have the same age. No problem. You know what's the problem? Each time I want to reduce one from the age, and when it's zero, the food will disappear, will appear somewhere else. And we have this loop which runs thousands of times a second, but we slowed it down. So we have to do some kind of calculations how long it takes, but we will go by practicing. So in the food, I was checking for the status. On each loop, I was checking for every single food I had. If the player is on the food, I will disappear the food. Uh, and score for sure. We need a score. Score. I'm not sure why they don't say score plus one. They count in tens or thousands or something. And I can say score equals zero in the start. And here I have a global score using the score I have in the whole program. Add the score, create a new food, and replace the food. So food i equals new l, new column, and new h. If you eat the food, it will be replaced by a new food. And here we can say, a equals uh, minus one, so I'm decreasing a by one. If the age of its food is less than zero or equal to zero, so it's expired, I need a new food. I can just do the same thing. Replace it with another food. Hmm? Yes. I'm thinking, and I have to save this. So I need an else. If this. Okay, if the food is eaten. If not, if it's expired. If not, food i equals l, c, and a. I'm doing this because this A is decreased and I need to save it. Looks very nice. Let's try. Let's see. Look at this food and see if, it's, if it expires. No expire yet. Let me eat it. Oh, I ate it. Cool. Ate this one. Whichever I eat, but it seems expiring is not working or it's very slow. Let's try with 100. Ah, okay, they expired. All of them expired at the same time. Traveled to a new location. So maybe 500 is good. And what we can do is when going for expiry, now I'm going for random integer between 500 and 501. But I can say 5. So they have different ages and player doesn't know about it. Okay. So we have, ah, and we are not showing the score. Let's show the score. And draw. I'm doing this. After that, I can say on my standard screen, add string on one and one. Show this string. Score is score. Hmm. Not showing. Why is that? Ah, okay, I have to move this to the draw, not to the main loop. My mistake, my bad. Bad, Jody. Draw when everything is done, do this. Here is a little bit tricky. It's better to 
add it here. Because if the food is behind the score and we write the score later and the food is in 1-1, one, one, the food will disappear or the user or whatever we have. So first show the word, then show the score, then go with this. We can still have a small box, for example, I think I should be able to go on the score, right? Right. Hmm. Cool. I can eat them and my score is increasing. Nice. So, I'm going to need an enemy. And I think we are done. Let's add an enemy. It's just like a score. So, sorry, like the food. So I can say I have an enemy. And then initializing the whole program, I can say for in in range of enemy enemy count, which I don't have. So let's have it in my configurations. Enemy count is three enough. Maybe if you reach some score, you can change your values, start a new game or whatever. Okay, in the init, I have for in enemy count, I need to create a new enemies. L and C can be random position. I have a new position and enemy append L and C. Cool. Now I have my enemies, but I'm not showing them. Let's draw them. Draw the player. Draw enemy. So I say for e in enemy uh, line and column equals e. Now I have the line and column, and it's enough to steady add character on L and C and enemy character. It's good to also have this in my configurations. Would be more fun at the moment. Let's show them with e which is for enemy. Ah, I have my enemies. This is super cool. But I can pass the enemies. Enemies should kill me. How? Uh, we can have another check here in my main loop. Check food status. Check enemy. And say, okay, in check enemy, I have a define a new function, check enemy. I will go one by one, say for. I can do the same thing and move the enemy. That would be more fun. So again, I have a list of enemies each have one x and y x and y and x and y i will go one by one we'll check them if the user is on the enemy i'm dead otherwise i will move the enemy so same logic go here uh l and c equals enemy i now I have the numbers. If L equals player L and C equals player C, I was telling you if you are doing something for more than once, it's good to have a function. I could create a function, hit player, send L and C, and it says, okay, if these two objects are collided or not. But let's go. Okay. If hit, I can just do, I can end the game, exit. But this is ugly. I can say uh, standard screen at str in the middle. Sorry, in the middle was uh, max lines, max columns. Write this, you died. No exclamation mark. I died. Very normal. And then I can say the screen 
uh, refresh because I want to show that. Then I will say time sleep for three seconds because I died and I should wait. And I can say playing is false. Remember playing? And here I have to tell that global playing. I had a variable here in my main loop and said while playing, do this. So let's die once and see what will happen. But I have to go and chase the enemy. Ah, list index out of range. If C equals W and word play, ah, this was the case. But I increased the word size. Anyway, let's fix it. What do you mean by anyway? Let's make word a little bit larger. Hopefully it won't happen. Oh. I broke something. This is not C, we cannot have minus, I believe, here. We are just adding them. If I hit the enemy, I died. I will check for that error we had later. What? Okay, this is X. I can go the bottom it's fine i can go to the right and left it is fine does not break but when i go up it breaks okay we have to fix this one this is in line 87 light 87 checking this one player L minus one. So we don't have word. Oh, sure. This is a matrix. We can do a silly check and say, and player L is larger than one. And that. Not very beautiful, but okay. That was ugly, but okay. Ow. And it's larger than zero because it can be one and it, now it's one. Okay. Now let's create moving enemies, our last steps maybe. Although now you have different ideas, you can add things, uh, add levels and this kind of stuff. But let's create moving enemies. Check foot status. I had it here. Check enemy. I'm going through all enemies. If enemy hit me, I'm lost. Otherwise, if not, else. Now I want to move my enemy. It's kind of same logic with the food moving to a new place. I need to move it. So, for example, I can say L equals plus equals one this will add one line and it will go down but this is not always i don't want it to go down i can say add random choice from one of these zero one or minus one c random choice zero one and minus one so it will add zero or one or minus one so c and l will have a small movement each single time but i have to check for the ranges so i say l equals force in range uh, l zero and max l also c equals force in range with c0 
and max columns. Say if hit, I'm lost. Otherwise, move it randomly somewhere. But this is going to be very fast. No. Because I'm not saving it. <laughs> Enemy I equals L and C. I was changing it, but I wasn't saving. So now it, they should move very fast. Yes, they do. Where am I? Dangerous. Are they coming to my side? But they're randomly going somewhere every time, but they're stuck here. Let's see. Otherwise, L. Why they're stuck to the right? C. Forced in range here. C. Add or minus. Was it really random? Doesn't look like logic. Ah, when they are going there, they are shown there. We had this minus one here. Force them in the game. Now it works. Where am I? Now it's better. But they are super silly. Hmm. Let's add some AI and finish this. Now they are moving randomly. It's not nice. And they are moving too fast. Let's add direction. So I'm here. Enemy is here. Where enemy should go? This side. And down. So instead of random, I, ha I can say if line of this enemy was larger than player line, L is decreased. If it's higher than, oh, sorry, if line is larger, so if it's lower than me, decrease it. If L is smaller than me, then decrease it. If column is larger than player column, if it's larger, decrease it. And if column is smaller than me, increase it. But this would be super aggressive because it just come and catch me. And see, I can go up or down. In one move, they can go diagonal. I died. Not interesting game at all. I died. Okay, what can we do? We can add a random here. I can move all the time, but let's add random to their movement. One way is saying if random random, so I have a random between zero and one, was larger than eight, do this. If this is it, they will just move toward me. But it is nicer to break them in different randoms. So now I can say, if they had, a, they have 20% luck to go in this direction. They have 20% luck to go in this direction, and they have 20% luck to go in this direction, because the random should be here. If any of this happen, they can come closer to me. Let's see if this is fun or not. I died. They were too close. One more. I died. Okay, they are too strong. We can move this to the hardness level. And config it somewhere. So I can say, okay, foot count is this, hardness level is 0.9. Let's see. And now it's nice. Ooh. Cool. Practically our game is fine. 
and they are becoming dangerous. <laughs> One thing you can do to make it a little bit more fun is using uh, UTF-8 icons. Because you are in a uh, terminal, you don't have much graphics, but you have UTF-8. So I can use an airplane instead of me. Please note, some of these, for example, player character can be replaced with this. But some of these are too fancy and are considered as two characters. So when you're going to uh, use them, you might have issues when checking for the collisions and this kind of stuff. For example, the bread. Or let's use a pizza. I'm sure there is a pizza. Let's see. This may not work well in the way we are checking the collision. You can put all of them in your world, different layers and draw them. That would be nicer. What I mean is, now I have different enemies in different locations and I'm checking screen for this. But you can have your world and put their layers and see if your pizza is on your player. Pit ah, no, no, no. This is not an enemy. Pizza is never an enemy. What is the enemy? Can you see any enemy? No. This might. But we will have collision problems if we use all of these. But let's do it. Let's have fun. Life is short. Let's try it up now. Oh! Much cooler. How? Cool! Ha ha ha! Let's change myself to something cool too. And we are done. What can I be? Not this. You can search for ship. Ferry. Ferry is good enough. Now we can call our game Pizza Furry. Where am I? Ah, okay. My specific font, I think, doesn't have the furry. I believe. Yes. Bad. Let's try to ship. Your fonts should have this. Ah, now it works. But you can see now we have some issues because of this UTF-8 when refreshing. Some of them may not work, may work, and other stuff. But it's cool enough. Hope you enjoyed. We created something fun. If you want to go forward, you can just add things to it. You can make it, I don't know, something. If you get it, then you can eat the enemies for some time. Or you can uh, jump over obstacles or whatever. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. This is the way to learn programming. You can see what we wrote. It was kind of easy and straightforward, only in 175 lines. And we actually kind of did it from scratch. Ah, uh, we are not using anything like PY games or anything. Enjoy. It is fun. Next step can be saving your progress, for example, or highest score better than progress. Or if you're, you reach to the... Uh, some specific score, for example, 100, whatever, you can uh, change this variable and restart the page or something. Anyway, hope you enjoyed. I enjoyed. Have fun.